Well, hello, my friend, and welcome to day 209 of our Bible reading plan. We are reading through the Bible in one year together. I'm so glad that you've joined us on the journey for today, and I'm so excited to be sharing some of my thoughts and reflections on the passages of Scripture that we have been reading for day 209. I would love to hear from you. Uh, if you have some thoughts and reflections that you want to share, please comment below. Love to hear how God's speaking to you through the Word today. Um, so the things that really spoke to me out of the readings for today well, firstly, uh, Romans 11, verse 22, where it says, Note then the kindness and severity of God, severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. Uh, what I loved about this verse is that it perfectly balances the love of God and the justice of God. It perfectly balances that um, that uh, that contrast. It's not a contradiction, but it's like a paradox between the justice of God and the grace of God. And you know what? I think sometimes we can either err uh, too far on one way. We can think about God as just all wrathful and all judgment and all justice, or we can err on the other side uh, where we're just like all grace, do whatever the heck you want and you'll still you know, be saved. You'll still go to heaven. And it'll all be good. This verse actually shows us how the kindness of God God and the severity of God work hand in hand. So as long as we are under the umbrella of the kindness of God, we receive the kindness of God. The minute that we step out of that, if we try to go our own way, if we try to rebel against God, then we are going to be outside of the covering of the kindness of God. And that's where we will experience the wrath of God and the justice of God against sin. We have no protection. We have no covering. So when we get under the umbrella, of God, we stay under his kindness and his goodness and his love and we receive all of the benefits of those things. So I just love the way that that, um, that verse just showed us, you know, you can't play with God, you can't mess with God, but when you are under his covering and under his kindness, you will live in the fullness of everything that he has for you. So it's like playing with fire. If you use fire in a, in a good way, uh, it's going to help you, it's going to feed you um, through cooking your food, it's going to warm you, it's going to provide you with all sorts of benefits but also fire can burn you. And in the same way, the holiness of God, the justice of God, the judgment of God, the severity of God, as opposed to the grace of God, the love of God, the kindness of God, the favor of God, work hand in hand. And so we have to use those things and approach those things in the right way to receive the benefits of them. I love in the Old Testament reading in 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 9 to 10, where it says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from harm so that I might not bring so that it might not bring me pain. And God granted what he asked. Um, I love this because we're here in Chronicles where it's like the history of Israel, the history of what happened to them, the history of the nation and, and um, they're recording the history and they're telling it to new generations. And I love here that the prayer that Jabez prayed was answered by God and it was it resounded and it echoed for generations. Generations heard about Jabez's prayer and the answer to prayer that he got. And so I love that his struggle and his prayer was remembered for generations because God really moved powerfully through his prayers. And I was just thinking about the prayers that maybe my mum has prayed and the generation who has gone before me has prayed for me and you know people in, in church and people in the generation before us who have prayed prayers, prayers of struggle, prayers of faith, prayers of believing God for revival, prayers of believing God for great things. And their prayers are echoed throughout the next generation because of how God answered those prayers. And so I was inspired as I read this and saw that, you know, Jabez's prayer and the answer to his prayer echoed for the generations to come. I was thinking about the prayers that I'm praying today. What prayers am I praying? How is God going to answer those and how are those answers? 
is going to echo in generations to come? Am I praying big prayers? Am I believing God for big things? Or am I just, you know, praying, God, please help me have a good day today. That's great. But uh, we need to be praying big prayers and believing God for big things, um, things that will echo and change the game for, you know, generations to come. So I'd love to pray for us today, my friend. I'd love to pray, firstly, that we would live our lives under the umbrella which is the love and the favor, the goodness, the kindness of God. And we wouldn't venture outside of those things and get burnt and get hurt by um, using, you know, the, the grace of God in, in a wrong way in our lives. I'd love to pray that we would um, just live in the fullness of God's loving kindness towards us. And um, yeah, not that make the mistakes that would take us outside of that. And I'd love to pray as well that we would pray big prayers today. I'd love to pray that we would pray big prayers and those prayers would echo for generations because they would see how God has moved in our lives. So God, I just thank you for my friend today. I thank you for the awesome opportunity that we have to just spend time in your presence and spend time in your word today. Holy Spirit, I pray that as we see this contrast, this paradox in Romans where you're talking about, well, Paul's writing about the severity of God and also the kindness of God and talking about living within the kindness of God and receiving from that kindness and goodness and love of God. But when we go outside of that, that's when we experience the severity of God and the judgment of God and the justice of God. And so God, I pray that just this idea of fire would help us to, to remember today how we are supposed to approach you, that we would approach you with awe and reverence, God, and we wouldn't treat your grace as something that is just common, something that um, can be trampled upon in our lives and just used for our own benefit or gain, God. I pray that we would honor your grace and your kindness in our lives and we would live under the umbrella of your kindness and live life to the fullest today in that kindness, Lord God. And I pray as well, Holy Spirit, that you would help us to pray big prayers in accordance with your will for our lives, Lord God, your plan and your purpose for us. Lord, help us to pray big prayers that see big things change and big things happen, that would just echo for generations to come, Lord God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that just as Jabez, his struggle and his prayer was known for generations, God, I thank you that the struggles and the prayers that we are praying today, Lord God, are going to echo in eternity. They're going to echo for generations to come. And so God, I pray that you would give us faith to pray prayers of faith, faith to continue um, in prayer and persevere in prayer to see you move in a powerful way. And we just give you all the praise. We give you all the glory in Jesus mighty name. Everybody said, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, my friend. Uh, it's been so great to see you here in Palm Springs on day 209. I will catch you tomorrow for day 210 of our Bible reading plan. I'll see you then. Bye.